Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and I'm going to finally answer the question about why your playback speed is wrong with high frame rate clips. All right, I see this question all the time. It's why when someone is shot at high speed, high frame rate, uh, why is it not playing back at that high frame rate in my application like Premiere Pro? And this is a question that a lot of people ask. And I kind of thought I knew the answer, but you know what? I didn't want to guess. So I went to the Adobe engineers. This is the real official technical computer science answer to this question. I'm not guessing. So the issue happens when someone shoots, let's say at 120 frames per second, but then they end up opening the clip and it plays back at 2997 or 2397, 24, whatever. And that's the way it works. Nothing's wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. That's just the way that it works because there are two speeds. And the names might be different based on the camera manufacturer. But the first one is called the sensor frame rate. That's the rate at which the camera is seeing the world, the, the high speed world. That's the number that usually goes with the shot. We shot this at 320 or 120. Then there's the record frame rate, and that's the frame rate that the recorded clip actually gets tagged with for playback. So there is a tag written by the camera in the file for playback. Not all manufacturers' cameras do that. Um, iPhone doesn't do that. Um, but if it has the right tag in it, then it's interpreted that way. It doesn't mean it's going to be the high speed rate uh, tag. It could be, yet again, 24, 29, 23. And the great thing about working with high frame rate in Premiere Pro is the quality of the frames and everything has been captured is always intact if you do the right thing and not re, re, uh, change the speed on the timeline in the wrong way. Okay, so remember, the sensor frame rate is what the, the, um, the real world, the camera is seeing as it's capturing it. The record frame rate is what we're seeing when it's playing back. So let's look at a few clips and I'll show you how we can change that in the modify um, dialog box. Very easy to do. All right, so I've got a 2997 and a 5994 timeline, and I've got quite a few clips in here just as examples. This one is, and these are all from Artlist um, stock video. This one is super slow, as is this one. Real time, real time, real time, real time, slightly slow, very slow little slow and real time. So they're all playing back in a 2997 uh, timeline. You have complete control to change that in the modify dialog box. If I go to the 5994, they all look exactly the same. Because Premiere Pro is using the record frame rate to show these here. So if we uh, open these up and look, you can see 24, 25, 25, 23, 9, 7, 6. They're all set up uh, accordingly. And the real time ones also, however, they were recorded. Some of these are 24, some 25. Um, I've also got a Samsung uh, clip that I'll import in a bit that's 2998. And then we're going to look at these red clips. So this one here, it says 24 frames per second, but look at this. There's no way that that's 24 frames a second. That is a lot slower and there's a lot of information. So I'll just jump ahead, hit the arrow key, and you can see how slow that is. That's one frame at a time. And that's 320 frames per second. I'll put a link in the description for you to go and download these from uh, Red Cinema. They're up there as sample clips that you can download and play with if you want to. Now let's get back to our 2997 and look at changing this clip here. 
So this clip, if we look at this in the project, is right here. If we right click and go to modify, interpret footage, by the way, you can set a shortcut up for this if you do this a lot. You can also do this to more than one clip at a time if all of the clips are identical. So don't grab different frame rates, but if you just shot a whole bunch of stuff at high frame rate and you wanna play it back um, at high frame rate, then you can select all of them and modify. I've set up a keyboard shortcut just to get me in there really quick. So. You can see this one, that again is the record frame rate. That's not wrong, that's in the file. I can assume this and change it to something different. So I'm gonna change this up to a thousand, click, and you'll see what happens to the clip. This area is not there anymore. Premiere Pro doesn't resize the clip. When it plays faster, it's actually shorter. It leaves that and it puts this little hash area uh, indicator. So I'm just going to drag that all the way back in here. Whoop. Zoom in. And now when I play this back, look at that. It's playing back closer to what it was shot at. And uh, I'm guessing because I don't know uh, what that was played back at. Uh, what it was recorded at, but that definitely looks pretty darn close. If I go back to that same file and go back to the frame rate that it used, again, you're gonna have to change that. So I'm just gonna undo a few times and put that back the way that was. So you've got control to change those clips. Um, I would always do it in the modify. I wouldn't do the speed changes in the timeline unless I was, was doing speed ramps. Let's have a look at uh, Red Cine. Red Cine X is the program that you, um, that Red uses to identify and work with their clips uh, because it, it really is an advanced system. In the metadata for the clip, this is that same clip, you can see over here, the project is 24, the record frame rate is 320. So you can actually see with Red Cine X um, what that the frame rate is. Here's my Samsung clip, and I'll drag this into uh, media, in media Info. I'll give you a link to this too. But with Media Info, you can also see the real frame rate is, is what Samsung uh, calls this. A real frame rate is 240 frames per second, but it's playing back at 29.97. So if we go back to Premiere Pro and look at the uh, Samsung, um, I wish I had something more interesting than this. I just ran out to the uh, intersection across the road or just down the road from me and happened to get this uh, big truck going by. So you can see super slow motion uh, of the truck. And if we change that, was that 240? Did I say? 240. So if I change this to 240, it gets shorter, but now the truck, you'll see, it's gonna come around the corner in real time. Undo that, and we go back to that's super slow. This isn't a complicated tutorial because this is not a complicated uh, way to work with high frame rate. You just might be confused at why it didn't come in at what you would expect it to come in. But when the modify dialog box, you're free to change that. It keeps the integrity, the quality, all of the frames intact. And you can do speed ramps and check it on the timeline. It's not gonna have that stuttering effect. Well, let's just do that uh, with that woman on the horse again. And if I show my There's my time remapping for this clip. And if I speed this 
slow this down rather. Slow it down even more. Slow it down even more. No blurring, no smearing. It all still looks good. I'm just hitting one frame at a time. Bop, 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 bop. That's how slow that's going. So I've done the right thing. I've changed the speed and modify and then did a speed ramp in the timeline and it all works fine. But that's all you really need to know. Forget the fact that it's different than what you expected. You can make it exactly what you expected or change it at any time. It's all uh, non-destructive and the best quality you can get. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly, any amount. Thank you so much to all of our wonderful donors who have supported us for many years. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to answer the simple questions that we all have about uh, some things like media playback and uh, get you the right answers right from the computer engineers at Adobe. Thanks guys. 